I recently cruised on Virgin's The Valiant Lady with my husband and my parents. This was a seven-night cruise out of San Juan, Puerto Rico, and this was our first time on this beautiful ship. If you want to hear all about our sweet sailing and what we did during this Southern Caribbean itinerary, please keep watching. everyone. How are you? I hope you're having a splendid day. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you stopped by. I just got off the Bad Moms Cruise. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, I hosted a Bad Moms Cruise on Virgin Scarlet Lady. And I had so much fun. I think I am losing my voice. So if I sound a little raspier than usual, that's why. My next video will be all about the Bad Moms Cruise. And I'm going to give you a little sneak peek at the end of this video. But this video is all about the Valiant Lady. And I was on the Valiant Lady earlier this month. I've sailed on the Scarlet Lady many times before this, but this was my very first time on the Valiant Lady. And if you are unaware, the Valiant Lady is basically a clone of the Scarlet Lady. It has the same bars, the same restaurants, the same basic layout, and the same teeny tiny pool. But even though they are very similar, I was really excited to sail on the Scarlet Lady sister ship. And this cruise was seven nights, so this was my longest virgin cruise ever. Plus, this cruise went to some really cool ports, Barbados, St. Lucia, Antigua, Guadalupe, Tortola. I was really excited. And before I go any further, I just want to say that I'm not going to include any information about the restaurants on the ship or what we ate. And that's because I recently did a whole video on this exact topic. I will link that video at the end if you want to check it out. That is definitely the place to go if you want some food footage. But this video is all about our ship experience and what we did at the ports. With that being said, let's dive in. So me, my husband, Tom, and my parents, we were all rock stars on this cruise. And that is what Virgin calls its sweet guests. We were regular rock stars, not mega rock stars. And if you're curious about the different perks for each category, I do have a video on it. And I will put it in the description box if you want to check it out. My parents live in Ohio and they typically only take one cruise a year, so they really like to treat themselves, so they always want to stay in a suite. My husband and I are totally fine in a regular terrace cabin, but when we sail with my parents, we do stay in suites so that we can enjoy the same amenities, things like priority boarding and access to Richard's rooftop. So we flew into San Juan the night before the cruise and we stayed at a hotel, and then the next day we headed to the port. We arrived around 1 p.m. because we got priority boarding, and it was a very hectic scene. It wasn't very organized at all. We were kind of wandering around trying to figure out the process, and somebody finally told us to go check our bags with the porter. I'm not sure why we had to check our bags. When we sail out of Miami, we can carry them on, but on this cruise, they asked us to please check them with the porter. It might be because there's not as much room in the terminal, but I don't know. We waited in line maybe 15 minutes to check our bags, and then we headed to the Rockstar waiting area. This was not a very comfortable space. We were all kind of crammed into a small room, and there weren't enough chairs. But most of these chairs were reserved for mega rock stars. So if you were a rock star, you kind of had to stand around and wait. So we completed the check-in process with a virgin rep, and that part was quick and easy. And they do complete the check-in process in the Rockstar waiting area. And then we stood around waiting to board. Oh, they did have a few drinks, things like water and juice and some snacks available while you waited. Around 2 p.m., they started the boarding process and priority was given to mega rock stars. So they headed through security first. If you hear a little bell in the background, my kitten Martini is in the room. She likes to be around people and she may make an appearance in the video. We'll see. So once the mega rock stars got through security, then the regular rock stars were allowed to proceed. We went through security and then we went directly to the ship. So besides the uncomfortable waiting area and the hectic scene outside the port, I have no complaints about embarkation. It was quick and easy and smooth. Tom and I stayed in a cheeky corner suite with pretty big terrace. The suites in this category are at the back of the ship. We were on deck nine, right above the dock bar and restaurant. This is a beautiful stateroom with a big, very comfortable bed and a cozy sitting area. 
the suite had a fully stocked bar that was included with our cruise fare, and the room had a vinyl record player with a selection of records. There was tons of storage space in the cabin. The closet was spacious, and there were drawers near the bar and under one side of the bed. Of course, the standout feature of the stateroom is the stunning wraparound terrace. It is enormous, with loungers, a table and chairs, and the famous red hammock. The hammock is in an awkward space around the corner of the balcony. In this video, it's around the corner where Tom is standing. It's all by itself, and it's next to a wall. On the other side of the wall is the hammock for the cabin next to you. It's just a weird placement with so much available space. And I don't understand why they don't put two hammocks out there. There is so much room available. That would be really nice. But that's just a small complaint. Overall, we absolutely loved our stateroom. It was wonderful. Oh, and even with the odd placement, Tom made full use of the hammock. I barely got to use it because he was always in it. He's a hammock hog. My parents stayed in a cheeky corner suite with even bigger terrace. And this was directly above us on deck 11. Their cabin looked identical to ours. I didn't notice any difference. But their balcony was a bit larger. I would say the length was the same, but it was about two feet wider. So with the cheeky corner suite with even bigger terrace, you get a higher deck and a bit more balcony space. And that's the only difference. Since we were right above the dock, I'm sure some of you are curious about the noise. Now, we could hear the music in our stateroom in the afternoons and evenings, but the music ends pretty early, maybe 7 p.m., and it wasn't very loud unless we had the balcony door open. It didn't bother us at all. So once we got to our stateroom, we watched the safety drill, and then we headed to the muster station to get our wristbands scanned. I absolutely love how Virgin does their safety drill. It's quick and easy, and you can get on with your day. Then we had a bite to eat and went to Richard's Rooftop for our first cocktail of the sailing. Richard's Rooftop is an area reserved for sweet guests. You use your wristband to gain entry. It's at the front of the ship on deck 16. Richard's Rooftop has a full service bar and you can order food here from the servers. Kind of a random menu of poke bowls and even spicy popcorn. To be honest, nothing sounded very appetizing to me. Everything sounded very foody. I think I'll stick to the pizza. But Richard's is a beautiful space with comfortable lounging areas and private hot tubs just for rock stars. To me, it's one of the nicest places on the ship to chill out. And it was never very crowded during our sailing. After that, we headed back to our cabin to unpack and get ready for dinner. And this was when we met our rock star concierge, Kimberly. And the rock star concierge is one of the great benefits of staying in a suite. Instead of ever having to go to Sailor Services, you can just message your concierge on the app and they take care of everything. It's a big benefit. For example, on this sailing, I asked Kimberly to make brunch reservations for us. You can have brunch at either the Wake Steakhouse or Razzle Dazzle. Oh, and you can have brunch at these eateries on your disembarkation day. So if you have a later flight out or you're staying the night, this is something I just learned about and what a great way to end your sailing. And you don't have to be a rock star to get brunch reservations. That night, we had dinner at Pink Agave and ended our evening at the On The Rocks bar. I love On The Rocks. It is such a great place to watch live music. And once again, the quality of the performers was superb. Such a step up over other cruise lines. I've seen a few Virgin shows and they're okay. Pretty good. But the live music around the ship is next level. We spent a lot of time at On The Rocks during this cruise. Not only was the music fantastic, but the bartenders were amazing. So friendly and efficient. They really made our cruise enjoyable. They took great care of us. Shout out to Alex, Martin, Francois, and Thomas. So that was night one. And every night on the ship was pretty much the same. We would meet my parents at the On the Rocks bar for a pre-dinner cocktail. We'd go have dinner at one of the restaurants. Then we would usually play around $20 on the slot machines at the casino. And then we would head back to On the Rocks to watch more live music. During the day, we were pretty much off the ship exploring the ports. There was only one sea day, but I'll tell you all about what we did in a little bit. But first, let's talk about Scarlet Night. As rock stars, we were given passes where we could be escorted to all the different festivities around the ship for Scarlet Night. We met our group for the Scarlet Night tour, and then the crew member told us to watch the performances by the stairs and meet him at the ice cream shop right after. So we did that. Then we went to Lick Me Till I Scream, and no one was there. Somehow we lost our group. I have no idea what happened, but it wasn't a big deal. We've done Scarlet Night a few different times. 
But right after we lost our group, this crew member just grabbed me and my husband and told us to follow him. I have no idea what was going on, but he had a few sailors following behind him. The crew member just ushered us into an area of on the rocks, and then another crew member gave us glasses of champagne. It was strange and fun. That's one of the fun things about Scarlet Night. You never know exactly what you're going to experience, and I love the outfits that the crew wears. Of course, the highlight of any Scarlet Night is the pool party. Do not miss this. And this one did not disappoint. The passengers really got into it, and the party was high energy. I like to go to the deck above the pool to watch all the festivities. It's not as crowded, and you get a really good view of the action. It was just a great night and so much fun. Virgin really knows how to throw a deck party. I have a video all about Scarlet Night if you want more details about this event, and I will link it at the end for you if you'd like to watch. So as I mentioned, this cruise was very port intensive, so I'm going to briefly touch on what we did at each one of the ports in case you are doing the same itinerary. In Tortola, we took public transportation to the beach. Now, when you're at the port, the people there, they try to usher you into open-air buses that will either give you a tour or will take you to the beach. But my best advice is to skip these group buses and just find a taxi. We found out that the taxis cost the exact same and you won't have to wait around for them to fill the bus. It's just more convenient and faster for you to get to where you want to go. Of course, if you want to tour the island, then the bus transportation is probably a good bet. Oh, and the views from the bus were fantastic. Such a pretty place. The beach they took us to was very pretty. There were food and drinks available, and there was a small rum distillery nearby where we got a few different samples of local rums. Our Guadalupe day was a little rainy and misty. Luckily, we didn't have an excursion on this day. We ended up going to the local open-air market and did some shopping. The market is just a short walk from the port. It was a really interesting market, and we enjoyed ourselves. In Barbados, we booked our own snorkeling excursion. We snorkeled with sea turtles and did a separate snorkel on a shipwreck. It was a lot of fun. And in St. Lucia, my husband and my dad went golfing. We booked this ourselves. There was a new course there called Cabot, and it is absolutely stunning. My dad said it was as impressive as Pebble Beach. It was pretty pricey, about $500 per person, but it was a once-in-a-lifetime experience for them. My dad is a big golfer. Oh, and the rates included a caddy. You had to have a caddy to golf here. And it was about a 40-minute ride from the port. On that day, my mom and I had a nice resort day while they were golfing. And in Antigua, we got a taxi and we just asked him to please take us to a beautiful beach, one that wasn't too busy. And the driver did deliver. If you go to Antigua, go to OJ's Bar and Grill. When we were there, there were maybe 20 people on the entire beach, and it was one of the most beautiful beaches I have ever seen. So our sea day was the last day, and we really just wanted to relax. So we started our day with brunch at Razzle Dazzle, and me and my mom went to the thermal suite in the spa. It's around $40 per person for a three-hour window. The thermal suite has a mud room, steam room, sauna, a salt room, and a couple plunge pools. It's a nice way to spend a couple hours. After that, we went to one of the hot tubs in Richard's rooftop, and this is another great benefit of being a rock star. The pool deck was pretty darn busy. It was a sea day, but when we went to Richard's, it wasn't crowded at all, and we were able to get a hot tub to ourselves. I really loved being a rock star on this sailing, but I'm not sure I'm going to be a rock star on Virgin very much in the future. We did learn during the sailing that Virgin has stopped discounting the suites meaning that if you want to be a rock star, you're going to have to pay full price. And the full prices are a lot more than what we've paid in the past. It's just supply and demand. People are willing to pay for it. And that's it. I hope you enjoy I hope you enjoyed hearing a little bit about this sailing and if you are going to be on The Valiant Lady, I hope it helped you a little bit to know what to expect. 
Have you been on The Valiant Lady? If so, tell me about your experiences in the comments below. I would love to hear all about it. If you'd like to talk Virgin Cruising with me just a little bit longer, I will link two videos at the end that I think you might like. The video on the left is all about the food we tried on The Valiant Lady. And the video on the right is all about Scarlet Night, so you'll know what to expect. Until next time, I hope you have happy and safe travels. I appreciate you and thank you so much for watching. Bye.